Alright, um, hi, I'm Dave Rupert. I'm here to talk to you about responsive web design bloat, which is a topic near and dear to my heart. But I'm gonna talk about the attack of the website, the website that gets bigger and fatter and more destructive as it goes. The biggest website in the world. As you've probably heard. You've heard on the street. You've heard about you've heard, gosh man, website, responsive website is so bad, so bad for performance. Oh, there's a devil. I'm going to talk about that. First, I work at a company called Parabell. We're a three-man shop based in Austin, Texas. We've uh, been friends from, since high school. We are not hiring. So, uh, <laughs> here you go. It's really cool to work with two of your best friends. It's kind of fun. Uh, really recommend it if you get the chance. i uh, been working with a company called Retail Nine. Retail Nine employees in the audience here. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, you got, you might be saying to yourself like, hey, isn't Retail not that uh, coupon website where every single page looks different? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, we're on a mission to change that and fix that up. So if you want to get a good job uh, doing that, you could probably talk to one of the people who raised their hands and they'd love to talk to you and like get a little bonus check if you sign up. <laughs> 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 uh, I work at, or I do a podcast with Chris Coyer at CSS Tricks called Shop Talk Show. Uh, it is the premier uh, fart sound podcast that also deals with web design. I really uh, enjoy it. It's fun. Uh, today we had Billy Friedman of Smashing Magazine, aka Smashing Magazine, on the show today. So that's just pretty cool. I get to talk to a lot of fun people. Um, through this, so that was pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, RWD is bad for performance responsiveness. So this is something that people like say to me, like, <laughs> like, like I ask them or something. Like, How do you, you know, this is something people say to me, like I've had like uh, clients, not not retail me not no, but like in the past I had this one client like even like come up and just be like, RWD is a fad. <laughs> I was just like, really? Okay. Jeez. You know, and you know, to, to be totally honest with y'all, I mean, I'm kind of post RWD. And what I mean by that is I'm kind of post explaining that responsive web design is a really good multi device strategy for your company and can save <coughs> millions of dollars at scale. <sighs> All right, let's keep talking. Um, like, it, it's kind of crazy. Like, people are like, very, like, oh, no. They're very opinionated. About responsive web design, and it's like it's really just like media queries on a website. It's really not that complicated. Because <laughs> when you look at the website, like the web is this now. Like like you are a victim. Everyone is is a victim. This happened to you. We didn't ask for this. <laughs> um, like we, we can't do anything about it, and it's getting even weirder, right? Like a hologram like that. Um, <laughs> Uh, so like this, this is like the real landscape. Like I have all of these devices in my house running like at the same time right now. Um, <laughs> so like we have to kind of acknowledge that. And, and when I look at this and like how am I going to build a website for all these? The only answer I have is responsive web design. Um, so responsive web design is that for performance. So, okay, okay. What problems are you having? I would like to know your problems. Tell me your problems, and they're like, they're like, uh, oh, oh, you know, jQuery. <laughs> uh, web fonts. Okay, uh, images. Oh, that's a good one. That kind of relates. Uh, web apps. <laughs> and then like the new one is like doesn't work on a hologram face. And it's like. What do you mean? That came out yesterday. It's not really web design or RWD specific. In fact, like like websites in 2014, it is 2015, so I updated this slide for you guys. But <laughs> websites in 2014 took a gradual uh, gain from like uh, 1.6 megabytes to almost 2 megabytes. Right now, we're sitting at 1.931 kilobytes or megabytes for an average. This is the average web page is like two megabytes, which is crazy. That is like a whole Taylor Swift song on your iPod. That is a lot of websites. So RWD performance, I don't agree with this. I sort of like think like a website in 2015 is bad for performance. Like everyone's website is kind of freaking terrible when you pull it up on 3G. So 
Blaming and co-orientation, not the technique. This is the great divorce. This is this is Tim Cadillac in his infinite wisdom riding a chariot of gold. <laughs> he, he descends from the clouds and tells us, hey, don't blame RWD. Blame the dudes who made it. The website. And and I'm like, yeah, no, that's cool. I totally agree. Thumbs up, thumbs up, right? Like that's totally true. Like four times made well, so cars aren't a viable man of transportation. <laughs> 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 That logic checks out. You know, like obviously cars aren't good. So surely there's a footprint. And this was this is where I like maybe disagree, not disagree exactly, but but where I'm like, like Tim's answer is good, but if somebody comes to me and they're like, what are the performance implications? <laughs> implications? <laughs> I'm just looking at it. What are the performance implications of a responsive website? I can't be like, nothing, bye. <laughs> I have to like know what it is, you know? And so uh, so I examined the best website ever made. Drum roll, please. DaveRupert.com. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I, I'm going to cite my own <laughs> website for a bit, so bear with me. Um, I was curious what if, what what the the cost of responsive web design was on my website. So here are some facts. I'm pretty experienced with RWD. I care about web performance. I have third party ads. Ooh, twist. I have third party comments. Double twist. I have multiple web fonts. Cast. <laughs> Including an icon five, no, those are terrible, said from some guy on some blog and from Medium. And I use jQuery. Oh, what's he doing? He use all of these and made a website fast. So total, I'm like 190 kilobytes, right? So this is my way in and really important when you start performance work, you get way in, you know, it's rocky, way in, and then you're like, Cool, what do I got? See that animation? That costs five hundred dollars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a paid some designer to do it. Um, so, uh, so most of my I, I like most of my website, you know, I'm looking at like HTML documents, CSS, JavaScript, whoa, a lot of JavaScript there. Images are pretty good, but the images are, I'll get to it, spoiler alert, I'm using a lot of SVG, like, or I'm using some, and so some of that was actually inline in the document, but I pulled it out to like kind of make it images, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so anyway, CSS. My CSS was 24 kilobytes, which is kind of a lot for like a blog, but um, my media queries, I, I took out all the media queries. I was like, how many media queries do I have? I'm going to strip them out, put them in a little file, get the size of 2.4 kilobytes or 10%. And for like uh, comparison sake, just to like kind of baseline, uh, I was like, how much, how many vendor prefixes do I have? Just making them work, making the site work on desktop browsers. And that was 1.4 kilobytes. So 6% of my total like site weight was making it work on desktop. And 10% was making it work on every browser app, hopefully. Uh, that's a big claim, but, <laughs> but that's kind of the goal. Like, so I'm looking at like 10% uh, bloat here. So, uh, so keep that number in your head. Uh, 40, J J JavaScript, 41.2 kilobytes. I am using jQuery, like when it comes to gzip or whatever, it's only 33.1. I was using Prism.js for my code highlighting. I really like it. It's really small, it's performant. Letter.js, I use a little, little typographic treatment. It's a tiny 30 line jQuery plugin. Uh, that was only like seven kilobytes. And then Fitbids and FitText, those are plugins I have specifically for responsive web design purposes. So I put them in the column for responsive web design, two kilobytes. Um, images, this was pretty big. Um, I wrote another blog post. I wrote a blog post on uh, Alyssa Park about responsive images, so I went with that strategy. You can read it, it's called No Pixels, No Problems. And since I cited one of my blog posts, go ahead and put another dollar in the jar. Um, but 31 point whatever kilobytes isn't too bad. And so I feel pretty good about that. I'm like, thumbs up, check it off, it's good. Because like if the average image weight is like 1.6 like megs, and I'm like coming in at 31 kilobytes, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. So fonts, this is really big, and this could maybe kind of go into images too, because I was using symbol set as an icon font. Um, but open sans, two weights at 31.7 kilobytes, that's kind of a lot. Uh, symbol set was 26.8 kilobytes. Um, 
that was that's a lot. That's that's and I'll get to like why that's kind of stupid to have all that. So um, so yeah, total cost of responsive web design was 4.4 pill. <laughs> Not too shabby. So I can feel in my case, the problem is not responsive website. Let's take a deep alert look at what's happening. Charts, guys, you guys are like, gosh, it's freaking Tuesday night, can I look, or Thursday night, can I look at some charts? I, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I have tons of them. I had an animating one I paid $500 for, so. Um, so I took, I took a look at like some scores, and who uses like page speed, insights, and stuff like that, yeah. I like these scores a lot. I like them because they grade me, <laughs> and, and I, I get, like it's, what's that? And you like grades, you have some like, earlier. I like grades, I like charts and graphs, I like numbers, I like things that like, like I can be like, yep, that's a mark. So, page speed mobile, 79, and the, I'm focusing on the article page too, because most people actually don't go to my homepage. Interesting, they go through relevant content that, that was shared on the organic Twitter sphere. So, I, I wanted to focus on the article page too, but uh, so PageSpeed Mobile in the 70s, PageSpeed Desktop, yes, I'm like a performance expert, I was in the 90s, oh yeah, uh, feeling good about that. Start render, 1.3 seconds, 1.5 seconds on 3G, feeling pretty good about that, that's kind of cool, but let's see what happens. So DOM content loaded, ooh, that's getting, that's two seconds, all right, sure. Uh, and my speed index was 1400 1700. So that's a lot. Um, and you might be like, what, what is speed index? And I'll kind of explain it here. Speed index is some hippie math that tells you how fast your website feels when it loads. <laughs> and um, it's kind of this, this diagram of when it becomes visually complete, like when the user uh, kind of feels like the, the website has snapped into vision and, and they like, feel like they can access it. Uh, you might be familiar with the white screen while the page loads. That is not ideal for a user. So <laughs> I try to paint for the user a little bit. Um, so how fast is fast enough? Well, Mr. Tim Cadillac, building chariot rider, wrote a post called Fast Enough, in which he uh, said, you know, the best thing you could do, man, is like be like one second or whatever. He's, he had some metric, but one second faster than your competition. So you have to go out and find your competition and measure them and then like say like we're gonna be one second faster because one second is kind of significant because that's like that's like like a hundred milliseconds a user doesn't feel that or they notice it but they don't like it wasn't like a, a, a change in their their thought pattern but one second is like when the user goes boom that was faster I know that was faster so that was one second so how fast is fast enough he he says like one second faster than your competitor but my answer came from the comments. Where Paul Irish says, how fast is fast enough? A speed index of under 1,000. Oh, let's keep reading. And for professionals to get the, uh, they should shoot for delivering critical path CSS in the first 14 kilobytes so they can paint on the first return from tower or whatever that RTT means. <laughs> and lastly, I think most people's expectations for what is okay is currently way too lax. So here's the only tip I want you to remember. If Paul Irish from Google says your website <laughs> should load with a speed index of under 1,000, your website should load with the speed index of under 1,000. <laughs> That's the only tip I got. That's the only thing I got in life. So here's my website loading uh, in slow-mo a bit. Oh, yep. Oh, oh. 2.4 seconds, I think the text came in. So if you're on 3G, you would like be sitting there and you'd be like, I'll, I'll, I can play that one more time because everyone's like, gosh, I missed that. So, um, so just watch it. Okay. So you've waited. Okay. You're like, gosh, two seconds. Okay, cool. And then like all this other time is like the ad coming in. You'll see it like it's mostly rendered here and then three, two, one, boom. <laughs> Third party ads. Pretty cool. So. This tool I'm using is web page test. Like you can up, crack it open and then like you, it'll give you like a video timeline if you run your test side against it. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I like to then take that into iMovie and slow that down so I get a real creeper view. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my problem, no text until like 2.5 seconds. Um, that's, 
when you're running a blog <laughs> with that is only text, uh, that's bad. I mean, like, <laughs> we actually live in a period where it's kind of okay. Like a, a user coming from a phone, they will, they're, they're gonna give you 10 seconds. You have a 10 second window before they're like, the internet's broken, I guess. <laughs> and, and right now, that's what it is. Right now, the user thinks like, oh yeah, the, the, the internet, the tubes must be clogged. They don't realize it's your fault. Like, they have not blamed you yet, for right now. Because everyone else is going to get faster. Google is going to get faster. Everyone's going to get faster. And your site's going to be like 10 seconds, and people are going to be like, this site sucks. I'm out of here. Back button. So that's something to consider. Um, web fonts were blocking type rendering. The way, like, my web fonts were just like, cool, I can't display any text because I'm loading 31 kilobytes of web fonts. Suboptimal image spreading, my 172 icon web font <laughs> for, I was using seven. So, and I justified it when I made it, I was like, I can use these. I'd probably use these at some point. But I was like using like seven. So don't feel good about that. Uh, time to first fight was about 500 milliseconds. And that's okay. Like that's the average like, like cell tower return or whatever. Like your phone talks to a tower, talks to a satellite, talks to, you know, comes back. That's okay, but like uh, it had no CSS in it. So the so the first return package, like return trip from the cell tower, didn't have any styling in it. So it's just kind of a blank document. Um, so that's something to consider. So let's take a look at the baseline HP seventy nine. <laughs> you guys remember these? You get them tattooed in your brain. Here we go. Now once we have a baseline, a bunch of numbers, it's just a video game. You make those numbers go down or up or whatever you need to do. This is the favorite part of my job because I'm just like, I'm going to win. I'm just going to win it because I'm going to beat the boss. Here we go. First thing I did, I normalized my website. I, I had a CSS reset. You know those, that like Eric Meyer CSS reset thing? I was using that. I probably from Tempest, I was just like, at include reset, bing bow, bing bow, website. That was like actually kind of impeding me. I, it was. I was adding like a hundred different selectors. It was adding like, um, or my previous, like, or my home speed index, like went from 1400 to 1300. And on this one, the article page, it went from 1700, that article page I had more dominance because of the com comments or whatever, it went from 1700 to 1400. So I got 300 points just by using normalize. Uh, this was an unexpected gain. I actually like opened my CSS file and I um, was using uh, Node SAS or LibSAS or whatever, and I didn't have Compass. And so I was just like, well, I'm not gonna include a reset. So I just needed to comment out that line. And then I was like, oh, I should just, and I was actually already kind of using a normalize. I was already resetting all the styles and stuff like that. So I was just like, you know what? Boom, it's out of here. Later Compass, you're done, I'm done. I'm going straight lips out. So uh, I unblocked my web fonts. So what I did is I used this thing called load CSS, and I'll explain it. But um, I, basically, you just say, "Hey, I'm going to use some JavaScript to load in my my fonts file." Like after things have kind of already like it's I'm going to lazy load the font. So the page is going to paint. Then I'm going to go request the font file. It's going to come back, and when it comes back, it has the web font in it. Boom! <laughs> it's going to paint. Sweet. Didn't really have the performance improvements I was kind of expecting, like like 50 and 150 or something. I wasn't too impressed. I was like, this shit, the blogs say this does better, but it did not do as good as I thought. But here's how it kind of works. It's a bunch of JavaScript, and then you just say load CSS, my CSS model. Pretty easy. Uh, no jQuery. Remember how I was using jQuery? I was like, dude, I'm gonna rip jQuery out. Bingo, bingo, I'm gonna get to the old uh, Top of Hacker News, and it'll be the most popular guy on the internet for one single day. And it's so awesome. And, but, turns out, I couldn't do it because I was a little more entrenched in my jQuery land than I anticipated. I, I like, had to like, it was like, cool, like rewrite every like little script or just like, go on with my day. So I'm going to save this blog post about jQuery being bad for performance for another day. Uh, but it was very uh, interesting to fantasize about. 
Um, <laughs> SVG sprites. Uh, this is something I switched to. I was switched over to SVG sprites from the Icon font system. So imagine going from like, uh, oh, I don't know, 172 fonts to like seven. That's a pretty good <laughs> improvement. And I went to SVG sprites uh, for a kind of a, I, I feel like this is more the wave of the future. I don't know if you tried to cook an Icon font before. Who's tried to do that? It, God, it's painful. You know, like you got to go like Ico Moon or font, and then you export from Ico Moon, you run after font squirrel, and then you're like, cool, I got these glyphs that I can't see when I like open the file. <laughs> God, this is it's it's good. I like it, but it's not like ideal from a web development perspective. You kind of want to see, and I like SVGs because like. If I get angry at it, I can like go in it and change it. <laughs> um, I can change the color like by hand. It's kind of cool. You can't do that with a font. So I like SVG sprites. I feel like they're the wave of the future. And then I'm using like this external SVG sprite thing. Uh, this didn't have the gains I was thinking either. You know, it's like 60 points. You know, I was like surely like going down like a whole I don't know 165 icons <laughs> will save me a lot of performance, but it didn't quite have the performance I was thinking. So I did a CSS cleanup. I just went through and refactored my CSS because I had, this was the first SAS project that I had done and it was stupid. I got, it was the ugliest CSS I've ever seen in my whole life. It was, or SAS I should say. It was like, I don't know, I had like files called like foundation and base and general. And you know, like, like I had all these like, like uh, just kind of, I don't know, just terribly named files. And so uh, I just went through and I cleaned it up and I like, made modules, like classic, like this is the archive list, this is the uh, header, this is, like I just went through and refactored it and both of them went down like 300 points. So 300 points just for cleaning house. You can go back to your boss and say, hey, I can make the website about 300 milliseconds faster if I just clean the house. And they're gonna be like, cool, you're a janitor now. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite one. This one gets you on BuzzFeed here. Um, all right, make it look side faster with one weird trick. Critical CSS. And who's heard of critical CSS? Who's kind of doing it now? Yeah. So it's this idea that you put CSS in line in the head. You know that thing like. Like Jeffrey Zeldin's book tells me not to do. <laughs> you do this thing, and um, and it's being advocated by Google because they kind of figured out like again, if Google says you should do it, you should do it. But um, they figured out if you put the the CSS like enough CSS to kind of etch out and style the page uh, in the head of the document, and then lazy load your whole style sheet after the fact. Like it's a, a that that speed index that perceived performance of how it's loading like goes up and I'll demonstrate that. So you you yeah you cal calculate all the styles that appear above the fold and that's kind of an involved process. But I'll get into all of these. Um, paint with the first packet. That's kind of the goal. It's like the first like whenever your server sends back is usually about 14k gzips, right? Like that's. <sighs> Your mind's melting. There's really no way to know what the server said, but uh, you have to figure it out. So this is the chart, right? So like your average website, right? Like you get a little bit of a packet, but you can't really paint anything. Maybe just painted like one thing, like a word, and then like all the CSS and JavaScript pop in, and then it goes up, right, and finishes. But the goal, what we're trying to do is like the first packet here, you're up to like 90, 95% visually complete in the first packet from the server. Turn to your neighbor and say like, no way. Because, <laughs> no way. No way. You can't do it. Can you? Twist. Um, so this is kind of what your document looks like, right? Style, tag in the head. Oh man, that feels creepy. It's okay. We're going to get through this together. It's just changing your perception, okay? And then, uh, yeah, so function load CSS, and then you just call load CSS style sheet or whatever. Uh, here's my blog loading. Boom! That's the critical CSS version. That's maybe not slowed down enough, but here, check this out. So this is the first packet. So it came back, like, and then it was able to paint. Remember how before it was like 2.5 seconds? Now it's 0.9 seconds. Way better user experience. Just by doing this, I was able to kind of like pull my like, like the speed of my blog and DaveRupert.com. You can go there on your phone right now. I ain't scared. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't scared. You can go right now. 
pull it up on your phone. It's gonna go bloop, and it feels like the, the site just was already stored on your phone. So, <laughs> um, so here's a comparison. I like this one. Oh God, what? This is fat. What? It's shredding the other one. So it's still like the ad network. I'm never gonna really win there with third-party ads, but like the user was able to use the page like way before that ad came in. And don't tell my ad partners this, but <laughs> they gotta up their game or else no one's, people are gonna be like way scroll past that ad before. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if like it comes in in four seconds, like who's like hanging around like, they're not four, I got four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So here's what I did, I used Gulp on the blog. I like Gulp. Um, so I got this uh, node module called Penthouse, which is an unfortunately named uh, <laughs> module, but what it does is it finds the top level of your website, like the rooftop plaza of your website. <laughs> and uh, there's this promise, uh, is Bluebird, it's like a bird goes and comes back, right? Promises in JavaScript. And Penthouse Async is promise that promise by Penthouse. So it's basically just a wrapper to tell promise or Penthouse, hey, you go do things, and then when you're done, I'll do things. Um, so, and then my critical task is, this is something I kind of do manually, because I don't need to do it every time, but I, I go, I fetch the CSS from my live site, uh, and you could do like a testing domain or something. What's weird is like you need like the generated stuff before you can like, um, it, I was getting like, I guess I could do like a local host or whatever, but I was having problems negotiating that. So I was like, okay, I'll go get the, the code from my live site. And then compare it against the uh, CSS I'm running in my, my style sheet directory. And then I'm um, going to write a file called critical CSS. So, uh, so I went and it calculates, like it measures the box, like it's called the above the fold. And I know you're like, wait, the fold is dead. And yeah, it is, unless like Google wants you to render it <laughs> uh, in one packet. So um, you have to care about the fold again. And it's really weird. I think you can set like like metrics, but I think it tends to be like this 1,000 by 1,000 window or something. All right. Um, so this, if you don't want to do that, here's the uh, lazy SAS way which I'm kind of a fan of. So basically, if you have your site broken up into a bunch of modules, you can just be like, well, these are actually the only ones I need to render the page like in one paint, or at least the above the fold content. And you probably don't even need like the carousel and stuff like, let that be crappy. And then, uh, you know, like post, maybe you don't need that. And then you just grab that stuff, the like critical stuff that you know is critical and uh, switch it out and see what's going on. I, I'm, Working on a project that ha I'm trying to do this, and the the where I like stitch things together, it's at like it's at like gosh, I don't know, um, it's at uh, 26 kilobytes or something, like all compressed stuff like that. I'm not feeling good about that, so I'm gonna keep on working on it and just kind of figure out what I can shave off. But it's kind of cool, like you can set your browser debugging to toggle 3G or whatever, emulate 3G. Uh, and that's a really good way to kind of like see how slowly your website loads because usually it's too fast. Um, but then once you have the critical CSS file, you just include it once in the head, bingo, bingo, bongo, you got a website loading with the critical CSS. So that's like the lazy way. I like the lazy way. Um, <laughs> but it kind of takes a little more effort to work because like, I don't know, Google may still bark at you. But anyway. It's something to think about. Critical CSS. Uh, this had a big improvement, 200 points, or 200 and 1,000. I'm still not under 1,000 on my article page, and I'm a bit bummed by that. But one day, I'll get there. Uh, I feel like that's pretty good for our site. I mean, I tried all this stuff with all this third-party stuff I have, like like ads and all that, I just couldn't do it. I just, I was like, it, what's slowing me down is my discus comments. And even, unless I want to do the whole, like, click a button to render your discus comments, you know, like, which I was like, I, I kind of want to do that, but because I hate comments, but they're usually kind of terrible. Um, but like, uh, I, I was like, mm, I'm not gonna, mm. for this exercise, I have to keep them, right? Like, to, to be true to the science of this test, uh, I have to keep them. So I went down, let's just do the article one. So 
78 to 96, that's a big improvement into how fast Google thinks my website is. Uh, I like that, it even went up on desktop, and then, boom, final results, the 3G hit is way, way better. So, feeling good about things? Yeah! Not a tiny bar that we're sticking to our fridge. We made you love stuff. This is a website I do with my coworkers called The Make Faces Of. This is a post we made about Sigourney Freakin' Weaver. She is amazing. Uh, whoa! <laughs> when I did her, like right before we launched it, I was like, I'm just gonna look and see how we're doing. Uh, <laughs> mostly because like, I fear people tweeting about it. <laughs> you know, like, I have like performance anxiety about like, like or something like that. And so I was like 47, and then I was like, ooh, that is not good. That is not good enough. I'm feeling real bad about that. So let's see what we can do. Um, but a little bit about the site. Here's a little bit of the art direction. There's three web fonts. 38 images, 1.456 megabytes of animated GIFs, a charting library, scroll changing animations, and a quiz with the audio files. Auto loading it up. Uh, I think I lazy loaded though. I think I did not. But it's like it's like a script that like plays like it's a quiz that you play audio files. Oh boy. This I feel like is in the range of a good like real world website test case, right? That's a lot of junk to put in your super website. <laughs> so uh, no holds barred. We just were like, let's figure it out. Um, so yeah, I, I had a lot of performance things. Like One thing we did that was kind of smart ahead of time and things we kind of thought about, uh, we had like two or four color PNG, which if you are able to like have an art direction that allows for like less colors, less colors means more speed. That if you think of it that way. Um, so that was kind of the only like pre-optimization we did. We had a strategy to do that uh, with, with like some of the 38 images. So this guy, I work with this guy, this is Trent Walton of TrentWalton.com. Uh, this guy's an interesting guy. <laughs> He's a 5K Retina Mac and a three megabyte <laughs> uh, T1 line or something, <laughs> T3 line. <laughs> Well, scumbag. So <laughs> it has to look good and load as fast as possible. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So we did the, like the classic things. You know, you know, I think GZIP wasn't enabled. So enabled GZIP, uh, optimize the images. So this was something we ended up doing <coughs> over and over and over. Who here like identifies themselves as a designer? Designer? Okay. Who's a developer? Developer? Who's like a design developer? That's not a word. It's, a, it's not Hi a developer. word. Fake, fake job title. Get out of here. <laughs> um, um, no, that's fine. Uh, You're unicorn. You're special. You're special. <laughs> no, a unicorn. That's actually what we call them. But um, so we, we had to optimize the images over and over and over to get it right. We had to figure out what, like, how much we could squeeze out of the images. Because clearly, like, when you're looking at like. 1.4 megs in, in GIFs, and like, uh, I don't know, 38 images, you're like, okay, a lot of what's slowing us down is in that realm. <laughs> the like, whatever, three megs of GIF of images. So uh, we did like minifying compressing JavaScript, like to make sure it all came down in as least amount of files as possible. We lazy loaded all our images, which is really helped. Like we just did like a lazy load script um, it really helped, but I don't know, it's interesting, like the browsers are pretty good at loading images, so it was just like, when you feel like you're tricking the browser, that felt really dirty to me, but um, I don't know, it worked, it, it had an improvement. Um, set up, we set up a critical CSS, like we did all the critical CSS stuff. We did the async and deferring of scripts when possible, like some scripts don't need to execute in line, so we just said, you guys show up whenever you want. Uh, and then we did more image optimization. When we got that ginormous website, I think the HTTP request increased. Whoops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to 2.4 megabytes, but we got it down to 651 uh, speed limits, and um, that's I think on cable, so it's not 3G. Don't get too excited. But uh, you can open it up the main phase is up on your phone. I'm scared. It'll pop in your face. It's gonna load. It's gonna be good. So this is pretty. I, I feel pretty good about this, and it's. 
and it's still 2.4 megabytes. It's above the average website or whatever. But um, for us, we kind of felt like it validated, like getting the speed index down this far from like a whatever, a 1700 to like a 600, really kind of validated to us like, hey, you can have a, a ginormous website and still do things to make it load fast. So I hope you're like, like, it's not really like size does not equate speed always. It, it's kind of like how you do things it equates how the user feels it loading, how fast it feels it's loading. So here's kind of the website loading and this big thing loads and it could even load better, but that, that was it. That was like, it's loading on a ginormous screen on 3G. I had it like set over to a 3G speed. Um, and actually like, I think we messed up. We did SVG for text here and we probably should just make it into the image because we're not really leveraging SVG. We're doing a cool glitch effect and it's super awesome. But didn't work with Firefox. So we were like, ah, let's rip it up. Uh, but if we matted that in there, it'd be like, it would be like, I think another less request or whatever. It'd be a little, a lot less information, I think. And so we may not really kind of do that, but like, that's where that, if you saw it like kind of half paint the image, you see like it kind of craps out, it craps out right where the SVG kind of starts. And so it's just like, I don't know what to do. And it should be progressive. It is a progressive image, but it just for whatever reason just stopped. So I think you're gonna have pretty bad compression artifacts if you bake that text in. Yeah, like we had a pretty, we have an, a, a version with the title in it and it was kind of okay, but yeah, it was kind of fuzzy. And like when you're getting into like Retina 5K Max and stuff like that, like that actually launched like in between the time we started and finished or whatever. And it was just like, oh, we're not gonna like roll it back. Like, like 5K Mac is gonna notice like crunchy like text rasterization. We try to stay away. So that's kind of, we were just like, let's just use SVG for text. It's beautiful. Um, maybe paid a bit of a penalty, but this is the before and after. You wanna see that again? It's pretty intense. I mean, this is like a, a you know, oh shoot. Let's do that again. Come on. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, not you. I don't like you. Get out of here. Here we go. Wow. It pops in there, it shows up. So you can make a big website kind of fast and feel kind of fast. And that's kind of what I was getting at with that little exercise. So let's get into some tools real quick. I'll rifle through them here. Throttle. If you do, who knows how to throttle their browser? You get in Chrome tools or whatever. This is something super important to learn. You open dev tools, there's a little thing that looks like a phone, terrible icon. And then you, go, you find the network one. Uh, and then you just say like 3G. Uh, it's super awesome because, here's the lesson, throttling is important because most of the world probably won't have Google Fiber this year. <laughs> we're, like, we're about to get Fiber. You guys probably work in an office with the big, super fast internet. Like, you don't know how it is for most people. Like, you have no idea. I have, I have Time Warner at my house. That's where I work. I have Time Warner, and every time it rains, my internet goes out. <laughs> it's been a very awesome couple of days. Um, so most of the world doesn't have Google Fiber. And we have to, like part of our jobs as developers and stuff is to empathize with how, how civilians, <laughs> how humans use the internet. Because um, when we don't have that empathy, we're building like a, a inferior product. And so you kind of have to always kind of keep in mind like, what if this site loads crappy? What, or what if somebody hits it from a really crappy phone or crappy device or uh, it's raining outside at their house in Austin, Texas? You have to think about these kind of scenarios just to build empathy and then it's kind of stress test your, your uh, design. The kind of analogy we like to kick around is like, like what, if your, what if your car manufacturer, Ford, right? What if your car manufacturer was like, oh, we don't need to test the car in water. <laughs> Away. It doesn't rain. Everyone has fast cars. It would be bad. That's the moral of the story. PNG quant. It's the bee's knees. You know, you, do, you went on like an image walkabout. I did. <laughs> you could probably do a whole talk on this. So I'm going to. Um, okay. Talk to Andy later. Um, uh, PNG quant. This, if you use, this is the image alpha program for Mac. Um, it, uh, there are Windows versions as well, uh, uh, like of similar. Life. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, there's this median cut PNG quant 
Uh, you select that, just no questions asked, just select that one. There's a lot of other options and it's all just as great, but just choose that one. Uh, and then what you do, you take this image and you're like, that's a cool image, let's see it. Um, and then you can like, if it's a transparent PNG or something like that, you can change the background and like, like it'll be, you know, it's on blue. Does it look bad on blue? Does it look bad on purple or whatever? And purple is a big one. Uh, every time I try. And then, um, uh, and then you just start sliding this color slider down. You just slide it down until the image, until there's a perceivable shift in how good the image looks. And once you see that shift, you stop. And then you maybe back it up or keep it there. Is it so bad? And then you can like toggle show original and like toggle it on and off. You can see the, the original file and the super smushed down file. And then it tells you like how good it is. So just by dropping it from 512 KB or 512 whatever, or millions of colors or whatever it is, just dropping it one thing, I say 59% on this like 500 kilobyte image. Think about it. <laughs> That's a lot of kilobytes. So um, get into uh, image alpha is what it's called. And then also there's a program called image optimum and these two kind of work together, but you just run them through image optimum too and smush the crap out. Or if you're uh, I'm sure there's like dev workflows, like, like just to do that automatically. But this one you kind of have to do by hand, unfortunately. Like, like you could trust a computer, like, hey computer, give me like two options and I'll select the best one. But like, it still kind of takes a human because if a computer does it, it's just gonna like, I don't know. Have you seen computers do image compression? It's pretty bad. Uh, it doesn't always work. So here's an example. We, we kind of shrunk the size too, but we ran it through, you know, uh, 13 to 8K. And so Trent probably went through and, and did all these images, like all 38 of them, probably did it about four times. And this is a lesson to you designers or design helpers that your job isn't done until the website launches. And uh, this was kind of a lesson we, we know, we know this stuff, but then, but we really realize it. Like, like I, if it's left to me, it's gonna be bad. Like, or I'm just gonna smush the slider all the way down to the bottom and not care. Cause I like long hair, don't care, it looks good enough. I'm just, <laughs> it's, it's a website, I don't care, uh, make it small. But like, but you have to kind of make concessions. And we kind of did this thing. I made, I made this thing, I need to put it on GitHub, but I made this little breakpoint uh, or like image monitoring script. Like you just start it and then you like you squeeze your browser and you slide it all the way out and it'll tell you like the maximum size of that image, like that div for like when you scrolled it. It's pretty cool. But it's like released. Uh, but, uh, but we were like, oh, this one only goes out to 600 pixels or Maybe it is even less because it's like, but that's like the maximum there. So we were like, we could safely crop off another like 20%. And so 13 to 8K, that's only five kilobytes. And you might be saying to yourself, five kilobytes, that's nothing. I eat five kilobytes for breakfast. And that's true. But like times 50 or however many images, it starts to add up. And then it's kind of like a sizable amount. You kind of want to do it. And again, you don't want people tweeting about how bad your website is the day you launch. So your job's not done until the site ships. Uh, web page test, if you're not using it, it's crucial to development workflow. I mean, you have to like throw it in here. Uh, what I like to do with my settings, I do mobile 3G. Cause like, I, I mean, like if you can do like 3G cable and like look good in front of your boss and that's totally awesome. But like, like 3G mobile connection, that's stress testing. That's like where you want to set the bar. And then, you run it three times and they'll get an average. Um, you could do like nine or a hundred, but three odd numbers I heard from some Google guy, the guy who made this, he was like, odd numbers are the best. I'm like, I have no idea why, but I'm, I'll agree with you. Um, so that's, I really recommend this tool. Um, you can do private instances. Um, I don't know, I, that's above my pay grade, but um, that is cool stuff. Um, so, and it, it's everyone's job. You have to monitor your performance. Like if you design something that is malperformant, that's a big word. If you design something that's bad for performance, uh, I mean that's that's business. That that costs money. I mean Google and Amazon and Yahoo have all calculated it to like uh, like a 500 millisecond slowdown, half a second slower can result in like 10 to 20 percent of your business just bouncing. So like the faster you can design a website, or like 
like you think about performance, like. I don't know. Have you seen that that Simpsons episode where Homer designs the Homer, the car? Love the Homer. No? Yep. It's a classic. Season four, episode 17. No. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like that. Like, you just, if you, you have to think about it in design, you, to design a really fast and good car, you have to think about that. And I love car analogies. So I'm going to stick with this one. But if you just kind of pile things on, you end up with a Homer. So, anyway, that's all I got. Thank you very much for listening. measure that or track that or know what's in it? Because you were saying it, you, in your first one there was no CSS in it. How yeah. do you figure that out? Um, it's tough because like, like I've, I've done things like I, I've like gotten my website, right? And then like I, I ran it through cat or whatever and like split it and got the first 14 kilobytes of that document. And I was like, bam, I'm the master. You know, <laughs> Publish a blog post about how you just use cat and like, you know, <laughs> like determine your performance. And uh, but the way gzipping works is it's all messed up. Like gzipping can send in the server your Apache config can send twenty kilobyte packets, um, and so you really don't know until it's up on the server. And then uh, the way like all the dev tooling it doesn't tell you it just tells you when that file shows up, and so you you actually don't get. And it's weird because I thought like, well, if it's gzipped, it's like a zip file. I can't like take 14 kilobytes from a zip file and like be like, cool, uh, give me, like, I can't take 14 kilobytes from a zip file and be like, cool, I got an MP3 or 14 kilobytes of an MP3. No, it doesn't work that way. But for some reason, the way websites do mod deflate and deflate and compression and stuff like that, they are able to, like, whatever they get, they can start ex expanding. So, um, so it's really hard to tell. The, the best way is really to throttle your connection and do and run it super slow, as slow as possible. And then you get that like. And just you, see where that like 500 milliseconds gets Yeah, get to. well, and like you'll, you'll, you'll see it just load in in pieces. And it's like chunks and it's ugly. And cause, cause you're kind of going from this like perfect website render the first time it renders to this like progressive rendering to where it's gonna paint and then it's gonna go back and then paint more stuff. And so it can kind of cause that like uh, falc is flash of unstyled content. It can be kind of jarring, like to the user. Like the user's like, "Cool, what happened?" And boom, like all the text is pink or whatever. Like you have to kind of like when you're watching it load, you have to kind of think about like, "Hey, what?" Like I don't know. It's tough. You you want it to be as visually complete as possible and as small as possible. And there's another library I didn't talk about called. On CSS, um, which is from Adi Asmani, it's a grunt thing or node kind of task, and it'll go and find out what CSS you're not using. So you could run that critical CSS thing through the un CSS, which would then like it would be as minimal as possible. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, we got all into this like flash of unstyled content thing a couple years back, and everybody was like, don't do that. You can't ever load anything without it looking perfect. And I'm wondering if the trend in going forward is going to be actually the opposite of that, like the, the, the flash on style content is actually preferred over waiting. Um, and for those of you who are doing a lot of typography stuff or a lot of web font stuff, um, Jason Panatel gives a talk, he gave it an artifact, and he talks about um, optimizing for unstyled type before your web fonts load. And it's actually pretty interesting. He talks about picking like secondary fonts and how you like space them out and you can change the line height and like letter spacing and stuff to make it visually match so that if you get, you know, these 20 lines of text on your screen and then your web fonts load in, it doesn't like jump you up and down the screen because you get more or fewer lines on there. Um, which is, is kind of, I thought it was kind of another interesting way to maybe like make it look almost the same, but maybe be a lot faster before yeah, you Yeah, web, web fonts are hard because um, they block your content. And then they also, like Elise is saying, they have different inboxes and line default line heights and letter spaces and stuff like that. If you think about like, I don't know, loading, uh, I don't know, Georgia versus Impact, very different <laughs> fonts. Um, so.
So it's tough. It's I don't know, but I I agree. I think the trend is going towards just progressive rendering, where you see the web page kind of assemble, and, and like good shops and good companies will kind of like be able to do that really well. Um, and but because uh, that's I think that's going to be kind of the, the hallmark is like can you do that really well? Um, but it is jarring. It, it, from like a design perspective, it's hideous, and, and it feels very web. There, there's always the web versus native thing. Like native is perfect. It just flows because it's native, 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 native. But like, I don't know what the web suffers. <laughs> So say we found our perfect font on Google Web Fonts. What are the next steps into using it the most performantly? Uh, pretty easy. So uh, that load CSS script from Scott Gell of Filament Group is a good one. Just put that in line in the bottom of your the like footer of your site, and then do a script or a, a yeah a load like the JavaScript load CSS, and then the path to that Google Web Font CSS file they give you. And then that'll eject a style tag somewhere in your document and request that file. And Google Web Fonts is pretty cool because they actually, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they like do some of the negotiation for you, like that, that font file will come back. And sometimes it has a base encoded thing in it, and sometimes it requests another file. But it comes back with the, like, uh, like the font file you need. So if your browser supports WAF2, which is like twice as fast as WAF1, uh, it'll be faster. Like like Google will automate all that, that stuff for you. So Google Web Fonts is pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good. I kind of messed it up because I like just stole the CSS on my file from Google. Like, and I put it in my blog and then people like on the Android are like, I'm not getting a font on my website. Or no, it's Windows Chrome people are very, very upset. I was like, sorry. All six of them? <laughs> six billion. Um, my site. I was talking about my site. Six. You want to hear some interesting stories behind the scenes of Shopify? Yes. I went into our stats the other day. Third most popular mobile device is, drum roll, the Motorola Zoom. <laughs> What? what is that? <laughs> it's this weird thing Motorola made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 2,500 visits from a Motorola Zoom last year. It's the same person. I don't know. It's like, is somebody in their device without trolling me? That's the only thing. Like, Someone's probably like, hacking to your site. Yeah, somebody was just like, DDoS by a device lab. Yeah. <laughs> What's your REA number? Uh, oh, no. But Windows it is like 54% of our audience on Shopify, which really? is crazy. Um, it does like being trolled. Everyone yeah. here. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's it's very in interesting because I was I mean I don't know I just I use a Mac but I made the Microsoft website but I don't tell you that's the story for another day. Um, but uh, it I made that on Windows. Truth be told, but uh, like it. Ooh, man, it's it's interesting. It's just like I feel like we're kind of approaching a monoculture in hardware, and then I want to smash the monoculture. So now that you've gone through, you've optimized your website. Uh -huh. uh, what tips do you have for developing going forward and keeping it optimized? Keeping it optimized. Oh boy. Don't change anything. <laughs> Never enhance. Block. <laughs> um, change the password. Um, let's see. That stuff. I, it's it's this thing. It's this like constant vigilance sort of. Um, one thing I've heard from like uh, Laura Hogan over at Etsy is uh, they have like performance cops at their their job, and so people who are like the you know you can have like. Uh, design cops and stuff like that, people are like, that's not good enough, that doesn't look pretty enough, you know? But like performance cops are just like, nope, it's my job to say no. I wear a, a police officer hat <laughs> and get to tell you. I think that's kind of the only thing, is like constant vigilance, somebody who's who has to think about that. Um, or, uh, or that hive mind performance culture. I mean, um, 
if you hear talks from GitHub and stuff like that on how they have done performance, I mean, they kind of like they'll they'll kind of like put web pages out there and then like they're like, dude, why does this like crash? <laughs> like everyone's browser on big files and like it was interesting. They like they I heard this talk from this guy and you know they have like your your code view, right? Um, with all the diffs like green and red code view, Christmas tree view. And like when they're testing it on their machines, it's like 13 lines of code, looks good, works. But like most people in the real world, like apparently diff like, you know, 30,000 line files and like it's hideous, but like it's a real world test case. Um, and they were just like, crap, that's a lot. The, it's an interesting talk because they, they like figured out what, they just had too many DOM nodes. That was like their thing. They were like too many DOM nodes. Yeah, just a table. Yeah, it was a table with like A links for like when you click a, a line number, and they're just like, well, let's just let's just use uh, let's just use a JavaScript click event on that TV that to emulate a link, and that saved them, you know, one element times thirty thousand, and made a difference. So there's I don't know. You just kind of have to have people like either a like mind, a hive mind, a Borg. I believe it's called. You need a board or a performance cop. Does that sound good? Sure. <laughs> Which one are you ready? <laughs> also, also, also. Look inside yourself. What's that? If you're using CI, you can automate a lot of these tests. Oh, yeah, like a continuous integration server, like Travis or something. Is that how y'all do it? Okay. Uh, we have a Jen Jenkins Jen plugin that runs page speed. Okay, and so you catch like every template, or is it just like well, on your main? We only check the home page. Okay. Does anyone else doing cool stuff like that? We run all sorts of performance testing. Every page on our site is performance tested at a hundred runs per page with Olympic scoring, crash down the data visualization that compares previous and current and see it sees the percentage drop and if it's within certain thresholds it'll get flagged for us to go investigate. Turns out a lot of those are false leads. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Based on noise. Times. Yeah. Depends on server load. And we have, also have a private instance of web page test uh, that we run out of Amazon. I wonder if it's too many tests. Uh, some of it is because we're spinning up concurrent runs on things and sometimes you know, but for the most part we're able to find issues before it gets to the to the site. Hmm. We have performance Robocops. Robocops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or T ninety X's or whatever what is the big one that the kills people. Terminators or No, no what was the uh, the like I don't remember. Stop. Thanks, John. I have a question. Yes, sir. What do you, uh, when you're working with designers who are facing the challenge of uh, a responsive design that goes all the way down to, from you know large desktop to handset, they know that they have to design a radically different experience, but um, you know the same code base largely is going to deliver that. Um, you know, how do you, what, what advice do you have for, um, for, for uh, design decisions that need to be made uh, in those two different experiences? It's kind of three prongs. Um, the, the biggest and best thing I think is working together. And that's like the tired cliche, <laughs> but it, it's like, like sitting down and working it out together, like means a lot. Like usually when Rick and Trent and I are designing something and like, like, I'm like, this doesn't work, you know? Like, I'm just like, uh, usually when that happens, I like, I screenshot it, I put it in Slack, and I'm like, hey, have some problems? And they're like, what's the problem? It's perfect. <laughs> I designed it, you know? And you're just like, no, it just like isn't working and weird. And they're like, what do you mean it's weird? And then like, so you're having this like battle of words about these like non-scientific things. Uh, so to combat that, like the things we've kind of learned are uh, one as a developer like get your designers access to your build as much as possible because like if you're building in secret and they don't know what's going on like they're like they're like 
they're giving me the, like the stink eye, the side eye, you know, about like, what's he doing my design? You know, like, like that's, it's like human nature. It's like you gave some, you know, it's like you gave your design child to somebody and you're like, how are they raising my design child? And then they're like, and they're like why is that guy looking at me? I don't like him. And you just give me all this junk that's impossible to code. And so, so we realized like, like having an open channel of communication. And I use Forward a lot. The it's a Ruby gem, uh, gem install Forward, uh, and it it costs five bucks a month. And I think there's a free version. But like, you it just it doesn't as a proxy tunnel to my local host to a public URL. And like I can just like boom, like spin it up and shoot it out. And I'm like, look. Like squeeze this in your browser, and then nine times out of ten, that's like, oh, that's the problem. I see where you're getting at. And you, it's like, so like we're we're all remote. So if you're in the same office, that could be even better or worse because like the office stuff going on. But like giving people access to your build is like number one. Like as a developer, that's the best thing you can do for working like with designers uh, and starting conversations and. You know, sitting next to each other, working things out together, co-piloting that that sort of stuff. Like, it's unfun, but it works. Um, uh, step two, and this is for the designers um, in the crowd. Learning Web Inspector is huge, because if you can tell, like, if you send a red line document over to a design or a developer. You just, you burned all bridges. You have destroyed everything. You have destroyed all goodwill. You could have brought, brought them cupcakes for like months and you give them a red line document and they're like, <laughs> double deuce, like you're, you're a jerk. So uh, like never do that. So what you can do is say like, pop up a web inspector, inspect something and be like, hey, could you like pad the H1 20 pixels like because you went through and you added 20 pixels and stuff like that that is a huge like that's like binary for me as a developer if somebody says like hey that header needs to be 20 pixels i'm like cool 20 pixels <laughs> <laughs> I, don't do that. I don't care i don't have to do it you just told me a thing like you like pasted some css or it could be really bad css at me love it i love that so that's like that's, it's like this two-way street that you have to kind of build, and it's really hard to do that. Um, it's unnatural, which is weird, but um, I mean, I don't know. People get into like left brain, right brain kind of discussions, and I'm like, like developers talk like this, beep, blah, beep. Design <laughs> talk like this, blah, beep, beep. It's like stupid, so <laughs> it's, people are people. We just need to talk more, probably. I, I would add to that, making each both of those parties feel like they understand why you're making decisions you're making um, I, I think you were kind of getting at that about the, the conversation part but you can't just say oh make this 20 pixels because i said so like you but to be able to explain some kind of logic or you know where we can't add this extra thing you need to add this extra file that's going to slow down performance or it's going to add you know, whatever um, that's that's i think been the best thing that's worked for me is to actually come with some logic around that instead of just going, no, I said do that because do what I tell you. Does anyone else have like good performance designing stories? <laughs> Learn to compromise. Learn to compromise. It's, compromise. <laughs> it's really, really exciting when you see designers that you're working with get excited about performance. And I feel like right now, even your talk, it's a lot about kind of gam the gamification. You know, how can I get the speed down? How can I improve my performance by this bit? And it's just so exciting when you get designers excited about performance, they want to work with you. And they'll, they'll ask like, how, how is this doing? How's my new image improvement doing in the page speed index? So I think that's really cool. You can work together on that. Yeah, yeah but you have to show them that. Like, yes. then that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, you have to say, oh, well, hey, this is, this will work better than this and, and make them understand what that actually feels like when they're loading up the page. Yeah. I loved your videos um, like of showing the speed the speed of it. That it was huge. I wonder if, if that's a thing that we could like kind of implement when talking to the designers. Like, hey, here's what this actually looks like. Here's when I pick, take it down to 3D and this optimized image or this non-optimized image or whatever. And yeah, like, show that. like bringing it like, like into vi like visual terms or even just like, like again like demonstrating the problem like like having them squeeze it or having them like just witness 
the compare contrast, like that's a big deal. So um, them, I call them them. That's not, that's not nice. I mean, it's a pain that we've all experienced, we've all felt, and we're all very familiar with. So it seems like a topic that people are really willing to empathize on. Yeah, I think too a lot of I me mean, and a lot of the designers I work with, we know H two C this this well enough, or and we can target JavaScript and copy y'all's JavaScript enough to be like, if you explain something to us, we'll internalize it and like slowly pick up on things. To be fair, I copy JavaScript. <laughs> You're not alone. But yeah, we're like, like, you hate to be like, the designers <laughs> need to learn code. You know, like that's like, which I don't even see understand the medium. Yeah, it, it's, uh, Frank Camaro has a really excellent post. Uh, um, I forget the title of his post, but he uses this phrase uh, uh, the with the grain, like when you're working with wood and stuff like that. Like, like when you're near a designer of physical objects and you're working with materials, you go with the grain because if you go against the grain, it's like rougher and it's choppier and like like so going with the grain and, and for a visual designer or a designer who makes websites specifically like learning how like the 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 grain of the web is really kind of i don't know transcendent let's say like because <laughs> you start understanding like hey what does this do what what is it bad at i'm gonna not do the bad things or like only do those occasionally like, so what's it good at, you know, and, and you try to do that. So, um, yeah, it's, I, it, if you go to his blog, it's probably like one of the recent posts, um, but it's really beautiful. That really spoke to me. So, designing for screens, I think is what it's called. Okay, well, thanks everybody. We can talk and drink.